Boston College returning to the bowl scene after a 40-year absence led by the sophomore quarterback Doug Flutie. The Tigers of Auburn rely on the potent wishbone attack. Freshman running sensation Bo Jackson. You've got a couple of potent offensive teams meeting tonight in the Tangerine Bowl on ESPN. Florida, the Boston College Eagles taking on Auburn. Tonight's Tangerine Bowl is brought to you by Dotson, who proudly presents the all-new Nissan Sentra. Once you test drive the new Nissan Sentra, you'll know why you need this car. And by Budweiser, for all you do, this Bud's for you. And by Timex, timekeeper to ESPN. Timex, we make technology beautiful. Hello, I'm Bob Lee. Welcome once again to our Holiday Bowl Bonanza just keeps on happening. And tonight, live from the Tangerine Bowl in Orlando, it is the Tangerine Bowl Classic, Boston College in Auburn. This bowl game, well, some 37 years old, it is the seventh oldest great history that goes hand in hand with this game. A resurgence through the mid part of the 60s and really at this point, a capacity crowd expected this evening for the matchup between BC and Auburn. Sam Rosen and Paul McGuire bring you the play-by-play -play this evening. Let's check in now for a few pregame thoughts. Gentlemen. Thank you very much, Bob Lee. Paul McGuire, Boston College and Auburn. Boston College with a multiple offense that Auburn has to stop. This is going to be a problem. They've got to get to Flutie. Flutie, the quarterback, is the key to it. Only 5'10". Great football player, Sam. What Auburn has to do, number one, is rush this guy. Blitzes. And the other thing I think we're going to be surprised at, we're going to see Auburn go with five defensive backs early in the ball game. Not on third down, but maybe on first down. Okay, for Boston College, the problem is dealing with the wishbone offense. They haven't faced it all season long. Yeah, the wishbone offense is a tough, is a tough offense. Now, what they try to do with wishbone is wear a team down. If this is a close game going into the fourth quarter, you've got to give the nod to Auburn for one reason. They're going to wear your defense down and they're going to score on you. Okay, stadium is packed. Lots of excitement will be set to go in just a little bit with the Tangerine Bowl. Now back to you, Bob. Okay, Sam, that kickoff just a few moments away. And as we continue on the pregame show for the Tangerine Bowl, our special bowl edition, our Holiday Bowl Bonanza, a closer look at the two teams, BC and Auburn, and the kickoff moments away. Boston Co College closing the regular season with three consecutive victories. In fact, their second game of the season this year. They tied Clemson. Among the highlights for Auburn this year, they, uh, they did play a very good game. Lost at Nebraska. Played tough with Georgia for 60 minutes, but for the first time in 10 years, pinned a loss on Alabama. Let's take a look now at Boston College. They have an offense led by the young and the small quarterback, 5'10 sophomore Doug Flutie, but he's got a heck of an arm. Here he finds receiver Scott Nizelik. Had an exceptional day in a losing effort against Penn State. The sophomore Flutie making his mark in 82 through for 18 or rather 13 touchdowns John Shane the flanker back puts uh, pulled this one in Flutie can run the ball as well his bootleg here well Pat Dye, the Auburn coach knows what to expect Boston College is a worthy opponent got an outstanding football team uh, coaching staff has done a great job they play with a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of confidence uh, they're a big strong physical football team on both sides of the ball and 
do a great job with the offense. Uh, Flutie, the little quarterback, is, uh, you know, he's, he's amazing. And, uh, you know, it'll be a, he'll, he'll make the bowl game a lot of fun for the Boston College people. I don't know how much fun he'll make it for Auburn people. Well, if you're rooting for Auburn this evening, you've got to be happy with this young man, freshman Bo Jackson, who's averaged six yards a carry, scored nine touchdowns Jackson has out of that Auburn wishbone attack. The other number 34, if you will, from the SEC. This was the big touchdown that he scored against Alabama for the upset victory, giving Auburn its bowl shot and the bowl bid. The other threat out of the wishbone for the War Eagles, the Tigers, junior Lionel James, who scored seven touchdowns this year, averaging almost seven yards a carry. In defense, we've got to slow down the wishbone, which we haven't played against. Now, we understand how to play against it, but our players haven't recognized it that much, so that's going to be a challenge, too. The wishbone is so mental because the actions and the reactions are so different than any other offense. Well, you've got to have somebody on dive, somebody on quarterback, and somebody on pitch, and you can't say, well, I thought it was a dive, and then have the quarterback run forever. So it's a very disciplined approach you've got to have uh, from a defensive standpoint. Quick look at the two philosophies and the two teams. The wishbone of Auburn, a big factor in this game, where moments from the kickoff will be joining Sam Rosen and Paul McGuire for the color commentary and the play-by-play, -play, live from Orlando, in just a moment after this work. Both head coaches for tonight's game, Jack Bicknell for Boston College and Pat Dye for Auburn in their second year at the respective head schools. But for Jack at the Boston College, his first bowl appearance, Pat Dye won the 1-0 record in a bowl. So BC comes into tonight's game with an overall record of 8-2-1. We mentioned some of the highlights for their season. Auburn uh, coming into the game tonight, 8-3. They did beat Alabama, so they're trying to improve on that. It's already been a successful season for the War Eagles with the win over Bama. Let's see how they do this evening against BC. Sam and Paul standing by. Okay, we are set to go at the Tangerine Bowl. 51,000 in the house. The Boston College Eagles in white. The Tigers of Auburn in blue. Auburn will kick off. Boston College, a record of 8-2-1. and one. Auburn, a record of 8-3. and three. A tough loss to Georgia, and then the big upset over Alabama. A really good matchup, Paul. Sam, I had a chance to talk to Pat Dye before the game, and he said one thing. He says his team is as healthy as they've ever been. But he's the only one that I found down there on the field that was nervous. The team looked pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was scared. Both teams really had a great week. They took them everywhere. Disney World, Epcot Center, Sea World, uh, wherever you could go, they went. That will be the problem with either one of these teams, how well the one fared out over the other with all the stuff that they had to do because they really kept them on the move. Deep in for Boston College. To the right, number 30, Ken Bell, a freshman from Greenwich, Connecticut. To the left of your screen, number 25, Howie Brown, a senior from Brooklyn, New York. Al Del Greco, number three, a junior from Key Biscayne, Florida, to kick off for Auburn. From the hash mark. The 37th Tangerine Bowl is underway. Howie Brown on the bounce at the two. 20. And down at the 21. Number 41 on the tackle for Auburn. And to tell you the truth, he's not listed in the program. <laughs> All right. We are set to go. Boston College at the 21. And a look at the Boston College offense with Doug Flutie, the quarterback. Zidanek, Nizalek, and Shane are the wide receivers. Nizalek is the tight end. Sam, that 41 is Pat Thomas. All right. Freshman linebacker. Flutie on first down. 
Starts to scramble and throws. Incomplete. Intended for Nizelik, the tight end. It was overthrown. And once again, Auburn coming out, starting with five defensive backs. There's Flutie at quarterback. Troy Stratford, a freshman, the leading rusher for Boston College. Bob Bistek, a junior, who just came back from injury late in the season, is the fullback. The, the defense for Auburn. Williams, Blackard, Ottman, Thomas, and Riley. Carr, the leading tackler for Auburn, and Martin are the linebackers. Second and 10, Boston College. The sophomore, Doug Flutie, who passed for over 2,700 yards this season. They fake the blitz, Flutie straight back, swings it out, incomplete, intended for Troy Stratford, and it's overthrown. And covering on the plate, Tim Drinkard. We talked about at the beginning of the game, Sam, the one thing that Auburn has to do is they have to put heat on Flutie. We're going to take a look at the rest of this defense, and we'll talk about it. There are the backs, Harris, Collier, King, and Drinkard. Drinkard covering on the last play. The thing about Flutie is that if you looked at the first play, Auburn rushed, they rushed the linebackers. They had the blitz on. That time, they faked the blitz. We're going to find out if the sophomore is nervous, Flutie, if they put the heat on. That's what they're hoping they'll do and make a mistake early in the game. And that's the one thing that Auburn has to do to control this football game. Five defensive backs in for Auburn. It's third and ten for Boston College. Opening series. Fakes the draw. Flutie over the middle. It's complete to Zidanek at the 45-yard line. Paul Zidanek, the senior from Waldwick, New Jersey, who's caught a pass in every game this season. Making the reception of first down, Boston College at the 43. Play action pass, Sam, and this is the problem. You don't put any pressure on Flutie, he's going to kill you. Watch Zidanek, he'll come across right to the outside. He's going to throw the ball from right to left. Look at how wide open Zidanek is here. No way, Drinker's playing short, and there was just no way to cover him. Collier was the other man, the free safety, that didn't get over. It's at the 44, first and 10, Boston College. Split the backs, then double wide receiver right. Brennan is wide to the left, and Flutie to put it up again, looking for Brennan, overthrows. Might have been Phelan, number 20. They were both in the same zone, Brennan 13, and Phelan, you're looking at him now, a sophomore from Rosemont, Pennsylvania. Downfield, Mark Dormady, number 46, covering on the play for Auburn. The man is putting heat on him is when they sent the linebacker. They sent, Auburn sent the left linebacker, Martin, number 43, and he's causing problems. That makes Flutie throw the ball a little sooner than he wants to. We've had four plays in the game, and only 26 seconds have expired. <laughs> four passes, Flutie's one for four. Second and 10. First running play, it's Troy Stratford, the freshman. Nice cut, gets up to the 49-yard line. Picked up five on the play, Bob Harris, the strong safety out of Decatur, Georgia, made the tackle. But a good pickup on the play by the freshman Troy Stratford, the first freshman to ever lead Boston College in rushing. Had an outstanding season, rushed for 630 yards and four touchdowns. All right, now we got Boston College. They're gonna go with three wide receivers, Sam. Okay, double wide receiver left, and now Flutie calls timeout. Somebody, two men ran off the field, and I think they were down a man. Troy Stratford ran off the field. Exactly, they're only And 10. Shane ran off the field. And so Flutie alertly calls a timeout. Just over a minute gone by in the first quarter. Timeout on the field. And the score here in the Tangerine Bowl, it's Boston College nothing, Auburn nothing.
McGuire at the Tangerine Bowl in Orlando, Florida. Boston College opening series, opening possession. It is third and five from their own 49-yard line. Flutie straight back to pass. Starts to run, being chased, gets away, 50, 45, and out of bounds at the 43. It's good enough for a first down, but there's a flag on the play, and we'll check it out. That's in a defensive secondary around the 40-yard line. This is what makes this man, Doug Flutie, so dangerous, his ability to run the football. Holding on Auburn, you saw the call. Flutie picked up enough for the first down, and we'll check it out. Well, this is the problem. You've got to not only not give Flutie time to throw the ball, Sam, but when you're rushing him, your outside men must contain him. You can't let him get back to the outside. There are the officials, the referee, Robin Wood. All the officials in the game are for the, from the Atlantic Coast Conference. They take the penalty. It's 15 yards, and actually more than that. They've marked it down at the 35-yard 34 yard line of Auburn. So Boston College has come from its own 21 to the Auburn 34. In motion, Phelan. Flutie to pass again. Complete to Nyselik, the tight end at the 28-yard line. They mark it at the 29. Pick up a five on the play. Scott Nyselik, the senior from Branford, Connecticut, the leading pass receiver on this team. Only one game this season in which he did not catch a pass. You know, you talk about this multiple offense of Boston College, Sam. It is a pro offense. It's a pro set. And the way you have to key this, and Auburn obviously knows that, you've got to key through the left guard or the weak side guard. Not always the left guard, but the weak side guard, the one away from the tight end. He will tell you where the plays are going to go. It's second and five. Flutie fakes the draw, being rushed, and down he goes. Bob Harris, the safety blitz. Throws Flutie for a loss, and that's what you said, Paul. They've got to put the pressure on Flutie. You have to come to Flutie. All right, Harris is going to come out from, from the left side. Now, when you see Flutie, he's got his back to him. There is just no way that he can see Harris until the last second. He has no chance. He's coming from the blind side. It's not Flutie's fault. He just had, didn't have enough people in the backfield to block Harris, and he made the play. But the thing is, Sam, can you afford to blitz him all night long? So you've got you to gotta sacrifice something else, and that's coverage. It is third and 13. Make it third and 14, the official call for Boston College at the Auburn 37. Flutie faking the draw, gives it the draw to Kristoforski. The fullback gets down to the 20-yard line. So they've been throwing the ball, and on third and long, they go to the inside handoff to Kristoforski, Brian Kristoforski, the junior from Detroit. Dennis Collier made the tackle. The best way to beat the blitz is to run a draw play, and that's exactly what they do. They come right back to the fullback, a real quick draw up the, up the middle. Mr. Forsky is wide open downfield. There wasn't a man within 10 yards of him when he got the football, when he broke the line of scrimmage. And that's the only way to break a blitzing defensive football team. Run right at him. First and 10, Boston College at the Auburn 20. The pitch back to Troy Stratford. He's got about three, four yards before he swarmed under on the far side. Doug Smith, number 99. Scott Riley, number 92, all in on the tackle. It'll be second down and about seven for Boston College at the 17-yard line. 12 minutes, 15 seconds to go in the first quarter. No score. The 37th Tangerine Bowl, Boston College and Auburn. 51,000 packing the stadium here in Orlando, Florida. Second and seven. Flutie still has the football. Flutie looking, throwing, it's complete to Kristoforski to the five-yard line. Brought down by Greg Carr, the linebacker, but Brian Kristoforski, the junior fullback coming out of the backfield. Why does he wear number 90? He used to be a tight end, but they switched him to fullback. Take a look at what Flutie does here. It's a fake back to the inside. He freezes the defensive end on the outside. Now you've got a linebacker car trying to cover the big fullback out of the backfield. No way to do that. Not on a rollout like that situation. And that's a tough pass to throw for a right-handed quarterback running to your left. Great drive for Boston College on the opening possession. First and goal at the six. Thanks to Kristoforski. He gave it to Kristoforski. Stop. Dow Ottman, the nose guard, a junior number 61, in on the stop along with Ben Thomas, number 91, on Brian Kristoforski. 
This is a great play. In the pros, they ran it a lot before. Not so much anymore. It's called a false trap, Sam. And what they do is they pull the weak side guard. When you do that, they hope that the weak side tackle will follow him. So, because nobody's going to block him. If nobody, if he takes the fake and follows the guard, there's a hole there and the, the guy scores. That tackle didn't do it. Got the tackle. Second and goal, Flutie straight back. Starts to run, cuts inside, touchdown, Boston College. The sophomore from Natick, Massachusetts, Doug Flutie, leads Boston College to a score on the opening possession. A 79-yard drive. Take a look at Flutie. This is pass all the way. He goes back. Look at the offensive line, the blocking there. He has nobody open. So what's he do? The one thing that he does so very well, and that's run with the football. You see how agile he was. He ran to the right, broke it back to the left, and scores a touchdown. All right, you're going to see Flutie coming out of the backfield from ground level. Now watch the move he makes here. Once to the right, right back to the left. Two defenders on the ground. The guy is, is, is quick. He is a good runner. Kevin Snow, the freshman for the extra point. And it is good. So a drive that went four minutes, 11 seconds, started on the 21-yard line, helped out by a 15-yard holding penalty on Auburn, ends on a five-yard touchdown run by Doug Flutie. Timeout on the field. We'll be right back in just a moment. and Paul McGuire at the Tangerine Bowl. Boston College leading Auburn 7 to nothing after that 79-yard drive led by the great passing of Doug Flutie. Snow kicking off. It bounces to Evans. Allen Evans at the 10 to the 20 and the 25 where he's brought down and Auburn and it's wishbone offense will go for the first time. David Thomas, number 50. Doug Geyer, number 9, made the stop on Allen Evans, a freshman from Enterprise, Alabama. Randy Campbell, the quarterback for Auburn, number 14. There you see 14 plays, 79 yards. Doug Flutie, a five-yard run for the Boston College touchdown. First and 10 Auburn in the wishbone. They have a fine running attack led by Lionel James, number six, and Bo Jackson, number 34. He's stopped immediately by Junior Poles. Junior Poles, number 72, a senior from Caledonia, New York, 6'4", 281. Is he big? Is he big? And nobody touched him. The fullback, O'Neal, ran right by him. You've got to block the big man at the line of scrimmage for this thing to take, take effect. You know, when we talk about O'Neal, we saw him down on the, on the sideline, Sam. He is huge. Oh. He's not very tall, but he's very round. What, what do they call him? <laughs> Fats Domino. He looks like Fats Domino. <laughs> it's a loss of three on the play. Second and 13 for Auburn. Fake to the fullback. Campbell still has it. Pitch back to Lionel James. 25 and up to the 29. Brought down by Tony Thurman, the left cornerback. A junior from Lynn, Massachusetts, taking down Lionel James. A junior from Albany, Georgia, had an outstanding season, rushed for 779 yards, seven touchdowns, second leading rusher. Bo Jackson, a freshman, led this team. So freshmen led both these teams in rushing this year. Stratford for Boston College and Jackson for Auburn. Ball at the 29-yard line. It's third and six. Campbell makes to the fullback. Tossing to Mike Edwards, the wide receiver at the 40-yard line. He's got a first down at the 43. George Ratajkowski 
number 15, Vic Crawford, number five, bringing down Mike Edwards. Good reception by Edwards. It really is. And what the one thing that the wishbone does, Sam, is that it puts one-on-one -on -one coverage basically with the, with the corner man on, a, on the split wide receiver. Now, when you get Edwards out there one-on-one -on -one with any corner man, it's very difficult, especially with all the play action in the backfield, because if the cornerback is looking in the backfield, it's going to freeze him. First and 10, Auburn at the 43. Campbell still got it, going to throw deep over the middle for Chris Woods, just too long. Tony Thurman covering on the play for Boston College, but Woods, the leading receiver, was out there. He's got good speed. He's going to be dangerous. He'll be a threat and a man to watch tonight. He is going to be dangerous because, again, I, I, you, got, you have to mention this, Sam, is you, you end up with one-on-one -on -one coverage, basically, because the play action holds the safeties and holds the other corner, so there's no help downfield. Just take a look at it. Now you see Woods. He is down there one-on-one -on -one with Radikowski. Now this is a running team, and they threw the ball on first down. Interesting uh, how Coach Pat Dye's thinking goes. Second and 10, Auburn at their own 43. Boston College leading 7 to nothing. The handoff is up the middle of Bo Jackson. And Jackson is brought down at about the, or excuse me, that's Greg Pratt, number 36, the fullback. He replaced Ron O'Neill. Greg Pratt, he's 5'7", 220. Their fullbacks are short <laughs> and wide. <laughs> you know, it's an interesting thing what Boston College is doing with their nose man. All right, their nose guy is Harrington, number 52. You see him right there in the middle of your screen. What he is doing, he's going on, on the nose of the, of, of the guard, sometimes to the strong side, sometimes to the weak side. Wherever they line them up, they're splitting them out. Third and a long two for Auburn. It's the pitch back to Lionel James. He's got the first down and more. 40, 35, and down to the 31. Great block by Ed West, the tight end to spring Lionel James loose. Well, an outstanding run, an 18-yard pickup for Lionel James. Take first down. Sam, take a look at the defensive ends are just frozen. They have no place to go. All of a sudden, James is to the outside. He just needs one block, and he can move it. That's West out there blocking for him. Picked up the first down. The one thing about this wishbone, you're going to freeze a lot of people. And, and I keep saying this, but you can see it every time that they run a play. You're holding linebackers, safeties, and defensive ends. Double wide receivers are in there now. Edwards and Woods again throwing on first down. Swings it out to Bo Jackson. 30, 25, and down to the 20-yard line. And Auburn moving right down the field on its first possession of the game and mixing it up well. I'll tell you, Campbell has great reflexes. A little bit like Flutie throwing the ball. Watch what he does. He's looking downfield. He sees his back going out into the backfield, Jackson. He sees he's got a turn. Now, Woods almost has a, has a clip, but he's smart enough. You'll see Woods right there. Not to block the defensive corner. and gets Jackson to the first down. This is just a great pass. A little, little flip out to the outside. He just threw it out there and let Jackson go get it. Bo Jackson, who can move a freshman pitch back to Bo Jackson, hit at the line of scrimmage, falls forward for about a yard. T.J. Fitzpatrick. A uh, fifth-year senior, actually, he's a graduate student. T.J. Fitzpatrick is a graduate student at Boston College. He played at Villanova when they dropped football. He transferred to Boston College. He's illegal. <laughs> he made the tackle, gain of a yard for Bo Jackson, number 34, just a freshman from McCalla, Alabama, 6'1", 224, and led Auburn in rushing this season. Had a great season with 829 yards, averaged six and a half yards per carry. Second and nine for Auburn. The throw on the right side complete to Chris Woods at the 10, and he's down to the seven-yard line. Tony Thurman brought down Chris Woods, a junior from Birmingham, Alabama, the leading receiver for Auburn. Sam, this is a pretty pass play. The reason it's so pretty, it was a timing play. You don't see that that often with wishbone teams. There's always a fake to the fullback. He just, Campbell just took the ball and threw it where he knew Woods was going to be. The ball was in the air before Woods made his cut. I really am marveling at the offense of Auburn. We were told this is a running football team that'll grind it out with a wishbone, and they have mixed it up beautifully on this drive. First and goal for Auburn at the seven. They trail seven to nothing. Campbell has the football. The pitch back to Lionel James. Knocked out of bounds at the three by Vic Crawford. Crawford number five. The free safety coming over to knock out Lionel James. Look at how long Campbell holds on to this football. Here's the key to the wishbone. From the backside, of Shaw, the, the right defensive end, almost caught up to him. 
Lionel James with the ball, it gets buried on the sideline. But the key to that whole play is the, the length of time that Campbell keeps that ball. 6.33 to go in the first quarter. Boston College leading 7-0, but Auburn is right there knocking on the door as they have marched from their own 25-yard line. Campbell still has it. Campbell is brought down. Outstanding defensive play by the defensive end, number 46, Paul Shaw, a senior from Maynard, Massachusetts. 6'2", 228, you look at Pat Dye, excuse me, Jack McDowell, the second year head coach for Boston College. He's really done a fine job at BC. And there is Randy Campbell, the junior quarterback for Auburn. He's out of Hartzell, Alabama. You know who really made the play? Perea. Perea. Perea, excuse me, Perea. The, the safety came up and took the back that Campbell wanted to throw to. I'm not taking anything away from the tackle. I'm just telling you that the, the, the back, Campbell had nothing to do with eat the football. Double tight ends on third and goal from the six. Campbell gets to the three. It was third and goal, and Campbell was stopped at about the three-yard line. Paul Shaw comes out from the bottom of the pile. Scott Harrington comes out, and Auburn will go for the field goal as they bring on Al Del Greco. There's Pat Dye. Man in the sport jacket. Mike Mann, number 17, will hold for Al Del Greco. I like the call. You take points when you can get it. Del Greco has been perfect from inside 29 yards this season. This one is also good. It's a 19-yard field goal for Al Del Greco. So Auburn, marching from its own 25, got down to the Boston College three, but they were stopped and had to settle for a field goal. Timeout on the field, 5.07 to go. First quarter, we'll be right back. Boston College leading 7-3. Auburn with a drive of 76 yards. Uh, had, to be, had to be a little shorter than that, though. They didn't make it into the end zone. 12 plays, settled for the 19-yard field goal. And the Boston College defensive unit. Getting a little instruction. Deep man, number 25, Howie Brown. Number 30, Ken Bell for Boston College. Al Del Greco will kick off. 5.07 to go first quarter. And Boston College leading Auburn 7-3 in the Tangerine Bowl. Howie Brown at the two-yard line. Straight up the middle. Got a little opening, got it forward to the 27-yard line. Good return by the senior from Brooklyn, New York, Howie Brown. Sam, you know, when you see a mess like that, what happened, a kickoff return, you see a, out of the 22 guys that are on the field, about 14 of them in that pile. Now you know why they call it suicide squads. <laughs> I'm serious. I was on them for years in the pros, and I, I loved them. you got to be a little wacky to do them anyway. Quincy Williams made the tackle on that. Seven, a sophomore from Fairhope, Alabama. <laughs> As you look at the Auburn defensive unit, there's John Shane, number 85, good receiver. Number three receiver on the team. Flutie does the same thing that Campbell does. You talk about timing patterns, and they're so pretty to watch because they throw him, Sam, before the receiver makes his turn. That's why they're called a timing pattern. He knows where that man's gonna be, throws the ball to a spot. He's there and makes the catch. 
It's second down and one at the 26-yard line. Flutie on the rollout. Goes over the middle, intended for Nizelik and overthrown. Dennis Conyer, number 47, was down there. There's a flag on the play, and we'll check it out. We want to apologize. We had some technical difficulties. We lost the audio, but uh, hope it didn't bother you too much. But we are back in full swing here again. Holding is the call against Boston College, and Auburn will no doubt take it on the uh, short yardage situation, and we'll push Boston College back. You know, you wonder why Boston College, second and one, runs a play like that. Now, Flutie comes out with a play-action pass. It is a great call. It's a giveaway down because you know you've got the big fullback in the backfield. You know that you can pick up a yard. You've been moving the ball very well on the team. So it is a, it is a gambling play, but the only, one thing you don't ever want to happen in, on any play is the penalty. And a holding penalty, now they've got second and 11 instead of second and one. Ball back just across the 25-yard line. Second down. A little over 11, a little more than 11 yards to go for Boston College, leading 7-3. to three. Flutie. Troy Stratford, the freshman, breaks into the backfield. Nice run, and he's close to a first down. Troy Stratford out of Linden, New Jersey, the leading rusher on this Boston College team. Just a freshman. He goes 5'9", 175. Well, you, you just take a look at what they're doing. Here's Stratford now. Everybody feels that Flutie on second down at 12, 11 or 12, was going to throw the football. What's he doing? He goes back and gives it to the halfback on a little quick draw play and picks up 11 of the 12 yards. That's keeping the defense off balance, and it's great play calling by Boston College. It's second down and uh, make it third and one. Ten yards on the pickup. Again, Stratford hits his own man and breaks through. Nice run by Stratford. He's still battling for yardage. He's got a first down at the 44-yard line. Good run by the freshman, Troy Stratford. He runs this way as a freshman. Can you imagine what he's going to be like as a junior and a senior? Take a look at it. He does hit his own man. He's jammed right there. Does not have the first down. Then watch what he does. He never stops his legs from moving, and he's still looking to make sure. Watch his legs. They're still going. They can't bring him down. First and 10, Boston College, their own 44-yard line, leading 7-3, to 3.50 to go, first quarter. Flutie, straight back. And with time, starts to roll now. Wants the run being chased, and out of bounds he goes for safety. Doug Smith, number 99, was after him. You don't want that guy landing on you. He's 6'6", 265. Well, the one thing that they've got to take a look at, and I think they will, is, is King, the left cornerback, number 27 for Auburn, is giving the wide receiver on his side of the field, on the top side, about 12 yards. And when you're doing that, you're, your little short dink passes, your eight yard outs are wide open. There it is again, and we've got King out there again, and he's still anywhere from 10 to 12 yards off the receiver. Now he's moving up. Second and nine, Phelan in motion, number 20. Flutie straight back, deep drop, looking deep, over the middle for Shane, it's intercepted. Number 46, Mark Normandy makes the interception. Normandy to the 45 and down to the 43. Shane tried to split the two defensive backs, and Gormany just stepped in front, made the interception. Mark Gormany, a senior from Miami, Florida. The defense sets this up, and I'll tell you how they do it, because Gormany is sitting back there playing center field. You see him come into the picture? They let the receiver look like it was one-on-one -on -one coverage. Gormany playing the free safety position in the nickel defense, ended up just, just hiding himself, disguising back to the side. Flutie never saw him. Take a look at it. You see Gormany coming in? That's a beautiful play. Auburn on first and 10. It's the fullback, Ron O'Neill, carrying for a couple of yards. 7-3, Boston College leading it. First turnover of the game. And remember this, Auburn is a team that doesn't make many mistakes. They had the fewest turnovers in college football this year, 14. And 29 takeaways, Sam, so which gives you a plus 15 in that column. And when you have that kind of a football team, look out. On second down, the handoff again is to O'Neill, the fullback. And he just gets a little bit down about the 40-yard uh, line. It'll bring up third and six for Auburn at the Boston College 40-yard line. Mark Dormady, who made that interception, missed about half the season with a knee injury, but comes back uh, with making his third interception of the season. Fine defensive back. There's Randy Campbell, number 14, the quarterback. One more talk a little bit about the first two plays called after this play, Sam. Okay. Third and six for Auburn. 
and the wishbone. The fake to the fullback, the hand to the fullback, and down to the 35, short of a first down, I believe. This time it's Greg Pratt, number 36 carrying. Steve Diossi, number 99, made the tackle for Boston College. He's the leader on defense. He's got a first down where they so? mark the ball. Surely he does. By a half yeah, yard. He's got it. Okay. All right, what I was going to say about the first two plays, Sam, the thing that surprised me a little bit, after a big turnover, you think you'd jump on them right away to come out with it, maybe a play-action pass or something to catch the defense because they're coming onto the field, they're cold, you got the big turnover, you want to shake up the troops a little bit. They went to the fullback two times in a row, but how are you going to question if they picked up the first down? <laughs> first and 10 inside the 34-yard line. Campbell with a pitch back to Lionel James. Makes the turn, 30. Dances forward to the 25-yard line. He stepped out of bounds. He stepped out at the 25. But Lionel James, what a shifty runner. Gives you a little hip, gives you a little leg, and dances right by you. I was going to say that Thurman, the quarterback, or quarterback number 17, makes a super play here. But watch what happens. Watch James get out of it. Look at He gets away from the blocker. Now he's got James there, but you can't hold him to right. So look at the dancing. Just give him another great. half yard on the outside, Sam, and he might have gone all the way. They call him Little Train, and he goes <laughs> to the 25. Lionel. Little Train James, second and one Auburn at the Boston College 25. Boston College leading 7-3, to 149 to go first quarter. Campbell to throw, looking deep. He's got his man out there. It's Edwards at the 10-yard line. Mike Edwards, number 89, covered by Ratajkowski for Boston College. A good reception inside the 10-yard line. Ratajkowski has no chance on this play. Again, we're looking at a timing play. You're seeing Ed, we don't see Edwards here, but he goes down, he makes a move to the inside, breaks it back to the outside. Look where the ball is thrown. Ratajkowski has no chance whatsoever to cover him. I asked the Auburn people to tell me about Randy Campbell. They say, well, he can't run, he can't throw, <laughs> but he gets the job done. That was a well-thrown pass. Yes, it was. And it made it so the receiver had to come back to the ball where the defender had no chance at all. First and goal, Auburn at the Boston College 9. Second time they've been inside the 10. The handoff to Pratt, the fullback. He gets about two on the play before he's stacked up. Jack Bicknell, the head coach, doing some cheerleading from the sideline. Ball spotted down at the seven-yard line. Boy, Sam, here's a position where right now, when you're down, at, down here, and I know they'd like to run the football, but when you're down here, a little play action to the fullback like they run, and then just pop that big tight end west, number 80, 85, right over the middle. Second and goal from the seven for Auburn. Boston College shifting in the line. Handoff is to Bo Jackson. He's hit at the five, but falls forward to the one. Nice balance by Bo Jackson, the freshman. As he gets to the Boston College one-yard line, it'll be third and goal. Frank, frankly, Sam, just a little difference in terminology. Bo Jackson wasn't hit. He hit Fitzpatrick. And I mean, he labeled him. He hit the linebacker and knocked him to his knees. It was a little cross-action play in the backfield, and Bo Jackson just ran over Fitzpatrick. Ball is a yard and a half away from the goal line. Third down. Two tight ends are Sneak in there. It. Sneak it. <laughs> Let's see. Bo Jackson trying to go over the top, didn't make it. Got to the one, did not get to the goal line. Now you go for it. Because no matter what happens, you got them to go 99 yards, and you don't give Flutie the opportunity in the backfield to run the football. All right, you're going to see Jackson trying to go over the top. He just jumped a little bit too soon, and he got nailed in midair. Dave Pereira. Pereira just met him at the, at the height of it. He has, you have no momentum at that point, and he nails him. Now... Auburn took a timeout with three seconds to go in the, well, they. All right, timeout on the field. Three seconds to go, first quarter. Boston College seven, Auburn three. Back at the Tangerine Bowl in just a moment.
we, we, look, we saw a timeout with three seconds to go in a quarter. You're wasting a timeout. Yeah. Because the quarter would have gone, you had all that, all that time to go to the sidelines and talk to Pat Dye. Campbell's excited. They're down there. They want to run a play. He, did, he wanted to go to the sidelines to get a call. And it wasn't smart, not at all. But he didn't want to make any mistakes. He did, forgot to look at the clock. They need about six inches for a touchdown. It's fourth down. Campbell, the quarterback. Will he sneak it? No. He still got it. And did he get in? No, he did not make it. It's Boston College ball. Instead of going the short route, he tried to swing the end and did not make it. George Ratajkowski, number 15, came up to make the tackle short of the goal line. He couldn't be more of an inch, more than an inch short. To take a look at it now. You're going to see Campbell come down it. Down down the sideline now. He can't get the pitch back to the outside. He wanted to throw the ball back to Jackson. Ratajkowski is right there. The ball has got to break the plane of the goal line. We're at the end of the first quarter. Ratajkowski and Fitzpatrick combining to make the tackle, but it was Ratajkowski that make the hit that stopped Campbell from making it into the end zone. The end of the first quarter of the Tangerine Bowl, Boston College 7, Auburn 3. There you see part of the packed house here at the Tangerine Bowl in Orlando, Florida. Good football game thus far. 7-3, Boston College leading it. You look at the Auburn bench. Auburn has gotten close to the goal line twice and been unable to come across. They've gotten a field goal once, and this time stopped an inch short. Sam, I, I would have done the same thing Pat Dye did except for one thing. On third down and on fourth down, I'd have ran a quarterback sneak because on the pressure on third down, the tackle was split out. All he had to do was tap the center and go with the ball. The other one, they were bunched up a little bit. But you only have six inches, like you mentioned. I mean, all you got to do is just take that little lunge and get the ball across the plane of the goal line, and you got a touchdown. It's easy Having, for us to say up here. Yeah, right. Having a little delay because uh, the scoreboard clock is malfunctioning, and we will be back to the action in a moment. Boston College, now they've just got to get out of this territory here. They're, they're about on their two-inch line here, maybe their one-inch line. Pat Dye, man in the sport jacket, uh, pacing the sidelines. Second year as head coach at Auburn. What a job he's done in turning around the program. Would you throw? <laughs> that, would you that throw? Would really fake uh, them out of their boots, I think. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, with the way this young man Flutie can throw the football, I wouldn't be at all surprised. I doubt it on first down. you got to get a little operating room. Boston College, uh, interestingly enough, uh, though they, they've been unable to really hold Auburn on the on the running plays, they've been able to stiffen up inside the, the five-yard line. I don't know if that's a combination. It's got to be a combination of a good defense and a change in the play calling a little bit. Unless they're picking up an audible uh, at the line of scrimmage. Boston College leading 7-3. Because Ratajkowski just played that play so perfectly. Yeah. And again, you know, when the quarterback doesn't have a chance to get rid of that football and you cut off his trailing back, 
then you're really doing the job. Besides that, he makes the tackle. Well, as we wait to get the clock back in operation, we'll take a timeout here in the Tangerine Bowl. Boston College 7, Auburn 3, we'll be right back. All right, we have gotten the clock up to 15 minutes. We are just about set to start the second quarter. Jack Belcher, number 62, leads his offensive line to the line of scrimmage. Doug Flutie, the quarterback. Boston College, third possession, a handoff is to the fullback. He gets about a yard. Doug Smith, number 99, wrestles him down. Good play by Smith, bringing down Bob Bistek. No, uh, correction, Brian Krzysztoforski. Bistek started. He's uh, had some injuries all season long. Pulled muscle. And uh, Krzysztoforski is the man in there now. Pick up. Didn't get much. That ball's still sitting on the one yard line. <laughs> you bet. Smith, you think he's not big enough? 6'6", 265 pounds. Hits back to Stratford. Gets out of the end zone. Gets up to the three yard line. Flag on the play. And it's in the line, and you got to figure a little holding there. you got to figure a lot of holding. They were holding that man against Smith. There you see it. First quarter statistics, both teams with uh, six first downs. Boston College, 49 yards rushing, Auburn 62. Boston College, 48 yards passing, Auburn 53. Flutie, four for eight. One interception. Campbell, four for five. And rushing Stratford, four carries, 26 yards. James... Eight carries, 36 yards. They haven't made a decision yet, but I'll tell you what I would do. I would take the penalty. They're going to refuse it, I think, but I would take You know why I would why? take it? Because it would move him back another half yard, all right, right on the goal line again. And with that, he wouldn't have any more operating room to throw the ball. Now with the ball out at the three or four yard line, he has some operating room to go back and throw the football, even though it's third down. All right. They decline the penalty. That's third exactly and eight, duty to throw. Plenty of time. Fires incomplete. Intended for Nizel, like the tight end. He was open, but the pass thrown a little too high. That's what I was talking about, Sam, the difference. You gave him room to throw the football. Now, Nizel was open. He just threw the ball a little too high and a little too hard. But he had all day to throw the football. And Scott Nizel, the tight end, is also the punter, averaging 42 yards per punt. Lionel James. Look out. The man who does it all is standing <laughs> at the Boston College 40-yard line. So Auburn will get great field position. Now they got to hold him up down here. Defense held well. Line that drive kick, off, kick his foot. off the side, out of bounds. Let's see where they spot it at the 22-yard line. Oh, nice select who averages 42 yards. Wound up kicking that just about 19. And Auburn will go on offense from the Boston College 22. First of all, is the key to that fourth down situation when you run the ball. You put him in the hole like that. Anything, a turnover or something, get the ball back. That didn't happen. They had to punt the ball, but a mistake. They would have had good field position with James back there anyway. That's what you said about going for it, the decision to go for it on fourth down. Now it's first and ten for Auburn. Lionel James. Campbell is the quarterback. The fullback is Ron O'Neill. Campbell still got it, pitch back to Bo Jackson, makes the turn, 15, 10, and down at the eight-yard line. Vic Crawford, number five, bringing down Bo Jackson. What a run, 14 yards. Watch the block of Lionel James, number six. Sam, it's absolutely beautiful. Over. 
You're going to see him out front. Take a look at number six. Watch this block. Up in the air, the guy goes on the ground. You gotta, you gotta love it. When a guy blocks like that, you gotta give him the football. Before the game, we were talking to the Auburn. People said, uh, "What about James?" They said he's also our leading blocker. There's O'Neill, the fullback, battles his way to the four-yard line. Boy, is he a load! Wow. Look at him. He is 5'9", 240, maybe 245. Might have lost a pound or two this week. I don't know. He has never in his life missed a meal. <laughs> Not one. And he's a good football player. Auburn is right back there knocking on the door. Third time they've had the ball. Third time they've been inside the five-yard line. But Auburn is trailing 7-3, to three, 13 minutes to go in the first half. Second and goal at the four-yard line. Campbell, the quarterback. Handing to the fullback, and O'Neill gets to about the two-yard line. Ron O'Neill is a 5'9", 240-pound sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia. The lineup that Boston College has on the, on the goal line defense, I can't believe that they're not running a quarterback sneak with Campbell keeping the football because the two tackles are split out. They now, whether well, they're going to do it in the short yardage here, Sam Wade's down short, I don't know. But if you take a look at the two tackles, you take a look at Harrington and Poles, they're split out. It's ball. still there. Yeah, ball is at the one-yard line on third and goal. Let's see what Campbell does. He's got it. He hands to the fullback. He's short of the goal line. Here we go again, another one-inch play. <laughs> Ron O'Neill carried again. This time he comes up short. Over the top, Doug Geyer, no, that's Steve Diossi, number 99. What the defensive lineman did is they just buried the offensive lineman, and that's the job that you want him to do. Then you want, that was Ruth that went underneath there. Here's the ball again, and you want your linebackers to come up over the top, exactly what they did. This is a virtual replay of the last time they had the ball. It's fourth and goal for Auburn. They have not been able to penetrate the goal line. Touchdown, Bo Jackson. This time he just went too high. <laughs> too high and too fast. Bo Jackson, take a look at it. Watch the, you see the defensive line bury themselves. Now the linebackers couldn't get in. The guy that makes this whole play is number 85, West, because he drove the linebacker down the line of scrimmage and never let him get up in the air. Jackson does a great job here, and West does an excellent job, the tight end. He's the guy that got Fitzpatrick out of the hole. Jackson over the top. Lionel James getting a block. They run well. Al Del Greco for the extra point. And Auburn has the lead for the first time in the game with 11 minutes and 34 seconds to go in the first half. Auburn, five plays, 22 yards, gets into the end zone. And the score here in the Tangerine Bowl, the Tigers of Auburn, 10. The Eagles of Boston College, seven. We'll be back in just a moment. Set to kick off, leading 10 to 7. Dave Blanks, number four, will kick it off. Deep for Boston College, number 25, Howie Brown, number 30, Ken Bell. Dave Blanks lets it go. Kick coming to Brown at the five-yard line. Heads for the middle, looks for an opening, and gets to the 29-yard line. Good run back by Howie Brown. 